Roundtable of the International Federation of Robotics. Experts from all around the world gather in Munich for Automatica, and they are happy because 179,000 units of industrial robots sold are at an all-time high. We had a record in 2013. We had 12% more than last year and much more than the previous, than the previous um, record in 2011. Despite remarkable increases in all regions, it's China, Japan, United States, Korea and Germany that represent 70% of robots worldwide, with China being by far the biggest and fastest growing market. The main drivers, automotive, electronics and metal. Uh, our success over the last years wouldn't be possible <coughs> without um, heavily go into automation and especially using robots. For us, the robot is like the iPhone for the manufacturing industry. The, that we, in my opinion, have to completely rethink some of the processes how we're running. Which will mean we, we, we haven't fully un, understood what the potential is, uh, because at the moment a lot of people just think we're putting a robot next uh, to a man and then let him do something. That is only half of the story. Uh, and needs some other rethinking, like what we did for our electrical cars, for example. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible to gain all, out all the possibilities you have. New demand for the suppliers. I think we are doing quite a lot on joining technologies, uh, new joining technologies that we get through these new materials. <coughs> Studying that, uh, preparing the robot we, talk, we talked about, ease of use. Uh, quite a lot of work on HMI setups, uh, going away from maybe the way that robot has been programmed in traditional way with codes, making a lot more when it comes to ready setup uh, uh, programming languages that are more graphical. We need to, by application software, we need to differ into different applications in future that will basically be the change in the body in white, which is well automized, but the process itself that will change. I think uh, what has been automated in the past with a traditional welding system can also be done with robotics. So it's at the end of the day the process itself. One major trend for everyone, automation and it's accelerating. In China, before there are a huge number of the labor intense uh, the enterprise. So such an enterprise right now because the uh, labor cost is rising. So there are uh, a large number of the middle size, middle or small size enterprise. They really needed uh, automation to replace the human labor. And now the main challenge uh, to, to overcome this, this challenge, we, we uh, as a domestic uh, robot manufacturer, we, uh, for example, we mainly focus on the to create the robots, so easy to use, and uh, with a lower price and, uh, and uh, with, uh, easy to integrate with uh, the, the equipment, equipment. Automation will influence the workforce more than ever. Right now we're in the uh, neighborhood about 1.1, 1.2 million workers. That's too many. And a number of people in the assembly plants are going to be reduced. And it's not going to be very long. Uh, to see that. I think every year people are going to see uh, less and less. That is one reason why Foxconn chose its very own way in optimizing production and started building their own robots. Robots we do purchase, but there are also things that can be done. So might as well build it because if you build it, you integrate it, you maintain it, and the overall cost, overall cost is indeed lower. So it's, it's the, the, the main driving point is economics. The biggest technical issue in the robot business, human-machine collaboration. And, and now we speak about industrial revolution with uh, our LBA EVA. EVA is an industrial intelligent work assistant with seven axes and every axis with a joint torque sensor integrated. <coughs> um, therefore, from the safety aspect, uh, we, we think um, that on the one hand side, uh, we have a safe position and velocity 
and we have a, a collision device and torque monitoring, torque limited. And for, for us the key is the kinetic energy. You have to manage the kinetic energy. So what we do is we have to design the robots in such a way that the forces are lower than it, than it can hurt the person. And that's the way we are going about it. So for me that's the state of the art safety for a robot. Which, yeah, which tremendously the, limits the applications then? No, absolutely not. Uh, if you look at, the, for instance, Chinese manufacturing, uh, in Foxconn there is 1.2 million people in assembly, that is one company. Uh, if you look in Europe, you have uh, not that massive assembly plants, but you still have tremendous opportunities for repetitive, boring works that really no one wants to do anymore. Uh, where this can be applied. So don't only look at the big things, look at the small things. That's where you find the, the automation opportunities going forward. We talk a lot about off the robot. In the end, I don't worry about the robot. I'm worried about all the additional sensors necessary to actually to do these small picking operations, assembly operations, uh, because in, on science, you have a lot of different type of grippers. Uh, the hardest point are this actually these grippers. The whole movement of five or six actions easy done. But then as actually to to train the tool robot and really that you have the same sensitivity as a human. That is the hard thing because when looks when you when you put something into a small hole, what all what is driving is a small sensitivity in the hand. That is actually what is steering the whole process. And this is where development is ne necessary as well. Many challenges ahead, starting from easy to use robots to low cost robots and even reusable ones. I, I think actually it's two, two aspects. Easy to use, I think, is one thing and easy to integrate is another aspect. Uh, we established a new approach, what we, uh, what we call scheduling. So at the end of the day, we define together with the specialist jobs what needs to be done. And then it's, it's at the end of the day, they just the sequence, how to, how to do the job. So this is one approach, actually, if you, if you go in people, uh, into uh, areas where you meet people who have never, ever had a chance to cooperate with robots or even with automation, because this is really a hell of manual work. I think we will see an evolution of what we have, not a, not a tremendous change. Of course, light, weight, etc. that is coming, uh, but that there will be a total change in the market, there will be new type of robots, totally different. Uh, except for what we see today, I don't see too much of it. Of course, do alarms will come a lot more, uh, that's obvious. Um, but, you know, when you get into utilizing robots in, in more pick and place, you will sooner or later get into process applications of gluing, etc. And then uh, the accuracy will be needed. So I think we need to have both. With the scale effects we are seeing today, we are seeing also that the costs are coming down for producing these machines, making it a lot more accessible to a lot more users anyhow. And I think we need to differ. The electronic market, the product cycle, life cycle is much lower than the automotive <laughs> industry. Mm -hmm. So such a mobile phone is maybe one year, I don't know. I would guess one year, latest two years, and it's thrown away. So therefore, you most probably need some robots which you throw away as well. <laughs> reuse, you know, reuse. <laughs> reuse. The automotive industry, they would probably need seven years uh, for one car. Six, seven years is a product life cycle. So that is much longer, and that uh -huh. needs to be differed. Despite a promising future, the robot industry faces many challenges and strong new competitors, even from different industries, such as indicated by the possible Google Foxconn alliance. What is fiction? What is reality? What is uh, actually created by the press? But I'm quite sure that Google will also will also uh, could could become uh, in in into in, 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 in good players here. But what I expect, and I think what's really very important is, I do not see com competition where we are now as a threat. I think it's really that we can, it's also inspiring 